what you want to what you want to do. So okay. I'll let you take the lead. Well, I guess we'll just jump right in then because um, I don't know what else to do. <laughs> truthfully, uh, so um, so tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you become a Wiccan? And then the other part of that is like, how did this happen? Like, how did you how did you become a Wiccan? And then how did you become conservative? And I know you kind of already answered the first one in a video you just put out. So if you don't want to go too in depth with it, that's fine. I can just link your video. It's actually, it's a, it's a really interesting story. As a matter of fact, um, you know, I tell people all the time, I was born into the church. I was raised Byzantine Catholic. Um, it's a hard nosed Catholic religion, very, very distinct from the Christian aspect. So okay. we were fire and brimstone. That's what we were taught. It was the, the one true way. And, um, you know, just through my dealings with the church and going through catechism, it started making me kind of question um, why were why were we so significant? Why were we above everybody else when there were so many people with so many different ideas and different belief systems? And how could everybody except us be wrong? Okay. So it really started when I was working with um, Vietnamese girls uh, that were fresh from Vietnam. They came to America with their families, start a better life. And we got really close. I taught them English and they taught me all about their culture. So when I was interacting with those people, the questions started getting deeper. Like, wait a second, these are great people with great lives and doing great things, but why is my religion telling me that, you know, if they don't accept God into their heart and if they don't, you know, do these things through the church that they're going to be condemned and I couldn't understand it. So I did a little bit of soul searching, you know, I wanted to know the difference between a Catholic and a Christian. I wanted to know the difference between uh, Jews and Muslims and, you know, mm. just kind of learn all mm. different things. And I came across the craft, which was actually one of the very last religions that I came across. And I was so scared because of what I was told in the church and, um, you know, being evil and, and demonic. And I picked up a book by Silver Ravenwolf, actually. and. Um, I didn't put it in the video, but that's where I got most of my principles from for the principles of witchcraft video. And Silver put it into a way where you can become a witch and tap into that extra power without letting go of the Catholic God. So that was super awesome for me because I didn't feel like I had to jump in all at once. So I did start out as a um, Catholic witch, if you will. <laughs> So as, as time went on and I just kept comparing and contrasting, um, you know, different rules of the church and, and what the Wicca was teaching me, I just, you know, came to, came to a point where I was like, I can't, I can't answer all the questions that I have through Catholicism, but a lot more makes sense through Wicca and in my balance in the universe, my place in the universe and how I feel others interact with the universe. Um, I felt like I didn't have to cut any part of me out to be mm -hmm. Wiccan, but I felt like I had to cut a lot of myself out to be Catholic. And there were a lot of questions that weren't answered. So to the best of my ability, I, I tried to cope and, and talk to different people on different levels, but it didn't work out. And I just committed to, to, to being Wiccan and, um, you know, continuing down my path. So I consider it a calling, just one of those things that, you fall into you think as a child that you're going to be in and, in and out of a phase but it just never went away it wasn't a phase <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> so um so typically i think you've said this too in one of your videos i can't i've watched a lot of your videos so i'm sorry i can't always remember which one said what but um i, I think I go on a rant, so I apologize. <laughs> that's okay <laughs> so i think in one of them you're talking about how uh typically uh, Wiccans or, or witches or anything that that's like pagan or anything like that, um, is typically like more liberal. And so, um, you being conservative, you're kind of in a minority as far as that goes. So, um, what made you basically, I guess, stay conservative? Cause I, I guess you'd get your, you would, would you say you got your conservatism from kind of like your family, kind of like growing up, like, uh, learning about the history of America and stuff like that? Oh, absolutely. Okay. And it's a great point that you bring up. The um, 
liberalism in the pagan community. And I don't think that they're liberal by necessity, if that makes any sense. Okay. So there's really nothing out there that says, you you know, you can't be a, a conservative witch. There's, there's no conflict of interest there, in my opinion. But it seems like because the conservatives typically push their values through religion, mm-hmm. that turns a lot of pagans kind of off to being labeled as a conservative. Now, I chose the name because it was a conundrum. I thought that maybe people would look at it and go, wait a second, those, th- those things don't make sense. How, how is this the case? And they would come and they would learn what true conservative is. conservatism is. Because like you said, it is um, a duty to your country. It is a duty to conserving the values of the Constitution. And again, it's also conserving the family unit, which I think plays very well with a pagan mindset, or if you're following the Wiccan principles, um, in raising your family, having a good balance. Um, you know, you have to have the masculine with the feminine. You have to have, um, you know, the strong with the weak, the little bit of good with the bad, and a little bit of bad with the good. So it always strikes me funny as people that come out and say, well, I can't believe you're not a liberal. Technically, it, it, it doesn't make sense for me to want to cut down values that that are good for, for my community, that are good for everything. I mean, if you're talking about being in balance, I can't be a, I can't be a feminist and still claim that I, I, I stand for, you know, balance and equality. I can't say that, you know, everybody has to be my religion or everybody has to be no religion because that that isn't, a, you know, a, a principle of conservatism either. And a lot of people argue with me that there too, when it comes down to the founding principles of America. And the funny thing about that is when you go back to each of the founding fathers, they all had their own different twist in religion too. So there was a reason why they specifically put that into place. And, um, you know, a lot of people say Judeo Christian values, but when you look across the broad spectrum of religions, I mean, you have the golden rule, you have the harm, none, you have do unto others. So they're all preaching the same message just from a different vantage point. So modern liberalism has kind of taken the atheist side Mm -hmm. where they don't want to have any higher power dictating to them. And that's, that's fine. But then you get into that inner workings of morality and where does your moral compass come from? And that's a harder question question for them to answer in my opinion. Yeah, me too. We know where yeah. ours comes from. Exactly. Yeah. So this is a this is what I'm finding very interesting is I'm actually I was actually I actually found you doing research for like the uh I was gonna do a video. I still am, but I think it's gonna change a bit. Where um so traditionally conservatism is more like for lack of a better word, Christian, right? Where it's nuclear family, a belief in a deity, stuff like that. Um, uh, and, but like you said, there are, uh, well, anyway, that's how I found you is I was doing research for like, uh, well, uh, what do, what do Satanists actually say? What do pagans actually say? And just trying to find like, well, this is where they're at. And this is how, why this is this way. And this is what Christians say. And that's why this is this way. And how, um, basically when it comes down to it, your political stance, wherever, whatever it is, is coming from your moral stance. Because like you just said, the, uh, a lot of times the atheists want to separate that. They don't want, they want to just be like, well, you can just do whatever you want. Well, I can't just do whatever I want. (laughs) We've never said that. Even if we, even when we're like, uh, not Christian or not Wiccan or just like a, you can have just like a tribe out in the middle of nowhere and they're not going to have do whatever you want. They're, they're not, they're going to have rules. Even if the rules are, you can only have three wives because after that it gets crazy, you know, or whatever you have to, you know, and it's just, it's interesting when you look at it, how, you know, it's, it's the moral, it is morals that, that guide where, which way you're going. Oh, yes, ma'am. So, yeah, and so I was going to do a video about that and then you popped up and then I found another article actually about how there's actually a, where 
the pagan or Wiccan or whatever you want to call it uh, section of of people are typically more considered liberal because they're out there fighting for like abortion rights and stuff, which is typically, you know, again, there are Christians who are fine with it, but then there are typically Christians aren't. So uh, I found another article that's like, no, there's actually a lot of people who are like, no, we're against it because uh, like you said, yours, I think it, we consider it a life. So that's not something I've ever heard. Any, any, when, even when I was a witch, I was like, well, I mean, I don't really want to have an opinion on that <laughs> because, you know, I, uh, yeah. And especially in, in the pagan community, and, and I know that that's one of your upcoming questions, so we'll get to that. But, okay. Um, it, it is interesting, like you said, to have, have contact with people who don't, what's the nice way to say this, don't have an allegiance to anybody but themselves. So yeah. when, when you're dictated by your own sense of morality and you fear no repercussions from anybody, I think that's where things start to get a little hectic and a little haywire, like you said, because you become very susceptible to stepping on other people's liberty at that point in time. Yeah. And when you step on somebody else's liberty, we know by the Constitution that that's just that's a step too far. So exactly. you know, if you don't have anything guiding you, um, what do you live by? Do you live by social standards? You can't say that because, you, I mean, no offense, but look at the liberals that are out there now. They're not they're not conforming to social standards by any sense of the word. So who then do they answer to? They they're not afraid of authority. They're not afraid of a higher authority. So how do you re how do you rein that personality in? How do you talk right. sense to them if they just don't want it? Right, exactly. I really love, um, I really love the How to Train Your Dragon movies. Uh, I think it's the third one where the dad dies, I think. Well, um, anyway, in the third or, yeah, it's got to be the third one. He says, there's no reasoning with someone who isn't doing things for a reasonable thing. Like, you can't reason with somebody who just wants to watch the world burn. Like, that's, that's a very, that's very important. Like, there are people out there who you just, you cannot reason with because, like you said, they don't have an idea of, like, oh, this is going to hurt me. <laughs> or they just don't care. So. Exactly. Um, you know, it'll never come back to me. That's a big, good line of thinking. Um, I don't care how it affects other people. That doesn't bother me. But, you know, we, we go back into the whole do unto others type of rule. If we're talking about energy in, in a Wiccan sense, you know, yeah, I could be putting out good energy for me, but how is that going to transform and make its way back to me in the long run? So, you know, to, to not be so short-sighted, I think, is what spiritual or religious people kind of have an advantage over um, somebody who's not spiritual or religious. We have, the, we have the ability to see beyond into the future instead of just being so... Um, quick to get instant gratification and keep going yeah yeah and not to say that there aren't religious people who do that but it's just you know it seems more over over arcingly i guess you could say no matter what religion you're looking at they're all thinking about well you have to think about the future like where where are you going what's happening is going to happen to your kids how, how's this gonna like i think christianity and paganism share the whole you're supposed to take care of the earth even though like, in, if you were to go to any Christian thing, they're not going to, and you say, well, I really want to take care of the earth, they're going to be like, what? <laughs> but it's in there, you know what I'm saying? It's in there. So, <laughs> um, just, I think it's different how we get there, but it's sort of, um, it's just very interesting to me. Uh, anything, anytime you look at religion and just in general, it is about the future, what you're doing now, how it's going to affect things later, and how you should treat, like, your fellow man. And yes. yeah, so like you said, the atheist mindset or point of view can't really answer to that because like I've had conversations with people basically when I was an atheist, there was really no problem with me like stealing or hurting people because why does that matter? I got what I needed and they have insurance, so they're going to be fine. Like, so why shouldn't I steal? Right. <laughs> you know, and they're like, well, there's no, it's bad, but why is it bad? I mean, right. you know, so. Oh, absolutely. And I'll tell you, personally, um, atheists 
You're the crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't, don't be afraid because that's just that you just you don't. And first off, I can't comprehend oblivion. That that concept is incomprehensible. I mean, just on a physical basis, we can't comprehend oblivion. But throw that on top of, like you said, just not having any type of standards other than I want to do it, so I'm going to do it. That's 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 a scary, dangerous person that you're talking to. Yeah, because they don't care. They're just going to do whatever they want to do. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I agree with you there too. The thing that I've really found very interesting about all this is I actually agree with a lot of what you say. And I think that's just, you know, I'm, I consider myself a conservative. You consider yourself a conservative. So I'm like, okay, yeah. I mean, I can go with her on that. I can go with her on this. I was really, um, my next question kind of goes into that sort of, um, Mm -hmm. Like, you've said before that you're a small government, and uh, I am too, but it's more like as small as you can get it. (laughs) I don't know. So when you say small government, what are you talking about? Like, are you thinking just a really small federal government, but maybe a bigger uh, state or local government? Or what is it for you? Like, what are you thinking? I think honestly, you know, and this question comes up a lot when anybody talks about bigger or small government. And I think the first go-to thing that everybody thinks about is federal government because Mm -hmm. the federal government has specific enumerated powers and we have taken those powers and just said, push, we don't care. We want them to cover all of this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously that's not how the Constitution was set up, but... When you talk to, you know, libertarians, which are, I love those people, man. I tell you what, I love libertarian. I agree with so much of what they have to say. And then we start talking about government and I'm like, pause for one second. Mm-hmm. I understand where you're coming from and I want you to be as free as humanly possible. I get it. But there's also a price to pay for living in civilized society. So their big talking point is, um, you know, victimless crimes. And yeah. all drug crimes are victimless crimes. They're victimless crimes. Listen, my family has a very long history with substance abuse. And let me be the first to tell you, there is no victimless crime in a drug crime that, that doesn't right. exist. The person who is on the drugs, he's a victim. His family is a victim. Uh, or her family, if you will, is a victim. Um, anybody that comes into contact with that person while they're intoxicated, they are a potential victim because they have serious potential to harm themselves or others around them. So when you sit here and you tell me that you don't want to see them locked up, I can agree with you. Well, where do we go? How do we fix them? And then we go back to that mindset of an addict doesn't want to change. They don't have a moral compass. And how do you get that person to come over that hump? No, locking them up isn't an ideal solution, but how do you keep the rest of us safe away from that person? So when you talk about big government, I would like to see the federal government shrink. I would only like to see Congress in session when it's absolutely necessary, um, unless we're talking about the next three years where they're rolling back all those crazy restrictions that they've put into effect over the past, what, 150, 180 some years. Yeah. Uh, I would like to see more state government. I guess that's a little contradictory, but if you hear me out, I'll explain it. Okay. Um, I, lo- I-, I love Chris Ann Hall, and I think she does a really good job of explaining the actual powers and, and why each individual uh, power was given to each person. So when she talks about state rights and states trumping federal rights, You think about it on a level of these people are closest to those officials. Mm -hmm. They have the easiest access to them. So if we all live in the state of Georgia together, and the reason we're here is because we like, uh, you know, laissez-faire capitalism. We like having closed borders. We like, um, you know, not having mask mandates for the time being and, and so on and so forth. We as a you know state, we can go straight to our state legislators and talk to them directly, hear feedback, we live in your state, this is what we want. But Florida can do what they want, and South Carolina can do what they want, and Mississippi can do what they want. Mm-hmm. And if you come into our state, then you abide by our rules and by our laws, and it still leaves it free to the people. Like, I hated Pennsylvania. I did not like the government. Mm-hmm. They lining up with my... 
ideas for the future, if you will. So coming here, it made more sense. And I was able to do that. Now, if we were to have a large federal government where we were, you know, our money's taken out of our paychecks, we're forced into this. Have you ever tried writing your federal government? Oh my yeah. goodness. It's, it's insane. And you never, never hear from these people. You get a, you know, prefab response back and they keep going and doing what they, what they want to do. And of course you're one person, you have one vote. And where does, where does that get you in the big grand scheme of things? When you see people like Nancy Pelosi or Joe Biden, or, you know, any of the other established Democrats or Republicans just doing what they want to do in the name of the people. And you know that, well, my neighbors don't want it that way. I don't want it that way. They don't want it that way. Where are these people, people. that you're, you're supposedly <laughs> representing? Because I don't see any of them anywhere. <laughs> exactly. I have had the exact same thoughts. <laughs> um, yeah. So small business, or I mean, sorry, small government will support small business. But, you know, ultimately, I think that lies in the state's hands. And it should only be as large as the people want it to be. Now, shoot, if you live in a blue state and that's what you want to do and, and you guys all agree on that, how about it? But I, don't be surprised if your numbers go down. If you have people like New York where they're just leaving in droves and don't plan on coming back. And I think that ultimately that would um, awaken some of the people in, in their positions because if they – actually went ahead and did what they wanted to do just say it was what the people said i think everybody in in the loop would get the message um sooner than later well now they're definitely seeing it with the riots so you know we'll see we'll see what comes from that but i i, I don't think that we're going smaller i think we're going bigger and that's that's the sad part yeah, that is unfortunate. I think so, too. I think the uh, riots and stuff like that are what they're going to use. Instead of pointing to it and going, look, we've obviously messed up with a bigger government. Let's make it more towards the people like we originally went to. They're going to go, oh, no, we need more government to protect you from the riots. It's like, I don't want that. Stop trying to protect me. <laughs> uh, that was Joe Biden during the, or during the debate where he, you know, he said, well, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get um, the behavioral health unit to come in. And I said, well, wait a second. You're not even listening to your own base because they didn't say they wanted more officers in uniform. If you listen to what they said, they said that their communities were afraid of officers in uniform. So your solution to that is to put more people in uniform and then send them down with police officers. I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, all right. So that's, um, wow. Uh, I see that we agree a lot. <laughs> Just surprising for me, but um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I have not watched, I, I've watched maybe 10 minutes of that debate. <sighs> and I'm going to make a video on it, but it's going to be more like, I don't even know what to say. This is not a debate. We haven't really debated in a while. People are just cutting in, cutting in on each other, and then you can't hear what anybody's saying. The moderator's getting mad. People at home are like, I don't, what is this? <laughs> but it's not a debate. And, checked out, and they checked out, and they've checked out for a long time. I think that's our first problem with the country. We need people to start checking back in. Mm. And this goes in with big government, too. Because the more that we check out, the more vulnerable we are to big government. So yeah. I hear this all the time, and it drives me crazy from my own family, from my own friends. You know, uh, I don't care. My vote doesn't matter. Uh, you know, what difference does it make to me? I'm just going to follow the laws. That's not what any of this was about. <laughs> that was not what any of this was supposed to be about. We were supposed to be in charge. We are supposed to be in charge of our own liberties and our own freedoms. And the only time that that government should step in is in between dis disputes between citizens. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, and obviously, if your local government's taking care of, um, you know, your infrastructure, when's the last time we had any local government focus on our infrastructure, rebuild sewage systems? Um, no. I mean, I know that we have Georgia uh, Department of Transportation down here, but realistically, they don't do very much for the roads or anything like that. Most of the highways are donations. Um, donation highways anyways taken up by uh, com community advocates and certain people that want to get involved so ultimately 
we need more transparency as to what actually our money is going for. And it's not that I don't mind helping the less fortunate, but I feel like if you were to leave that up to the people, they would step in and help each other. Mm. And there would, more, there would be more reason to because they wouldn't have the attitude, oh, somebody else is going to do it. Yeah, that's how I feel as well. I, th I take a lot, when I talk to people about it, I'm like, I'm more like what you would think of as like Wild West almost. Because in the Wild West, they would hire people before the judges got involved. They would hire like a, a sheriff and he would go out and protect them so that they could keep working and not have to stop working and go protect each other. But even, let's see, um, doo -doo -doo. even like about 20 years ago, I lived out in Arizona. Arizona is a very different culture from South Carolina where I live now. It is very much, um, everybody's got a gun. Maybe even the baby in the diaper has a gun, you know, <laughs> everybody's got one, you know, and <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but everybody, even, even if they're not doing the polite sort of thing that they do in the South where they're like, oh, hey, oh, hello. Oh, hey, how's it going? You know, as you walk by, it really doesn't seem to matter to them because what they're, what they're most interested in is they're going to look at you, you're fine, and they're going to walk off. If you're in trouble, they're just going to go help you, and it's not, I don't know, it seems like in the south, or in the east over here, or in the southeast, it seems like if you're going to help somebody, you have to let like 20 other people know. It's like, why are we doing this? And then if you don't say hello, but you just sort of nod at somebody, you're rude. It's like, why does this matter as much? I don't understand. Um, in Arizona, um, we were the poor kids, so we... Um, yeah, I grew up very poor. So, uh, Christmas time, the people who had more money ended up giving us food. Like they gave us like a full Christmas dinner. They gave us presents. You know, even if the presents were like, here's some socks, <laughs> you know, it's still better because we didn't have any, you know, it was still, and I don't see that here. I see that more like because like you say, here in the South, it's more about, well, they can just go get welfare. And out there, people didn't, don't want to do that. They want to be independent as much as they can be. So. And, and it is, um, you know, it's kind of funny. I've always kind of looked at that because there's always been that chasm between the East and the West Coast. And it's almost, if you look at it, it's like the political spectrum. Yeah. So you have a lot of right wingers on the East Coast. You have a lot of left wingers on the West Coast, and then you kind of have that, you know, middle in between that are, you know, they're they're your hard nose. I'm on the line. I'm okay here, but I'm not okay there. But um, it is. It's it's funny to watch that. And here I found because we when we moved here, we actually got into a really bad situation, and mm -hmm. um, we didn't have access to any of our bank accounts. We didn't have access to a lot of things and we went for like a week down to the church and just was like hey look um i'm having issues i know that you guys run a food pantry and the funny thing about that is you know you don't want to walk into a church and say hey i don't believe what you believe give me stuff please yeah <laughs> so when we went you know i i talked to the uh, i don't think they were priests or anything but they were community um advocates who were working with with the church to distribute for for the food bank and whatnot and we had really good conversation and i got into you know talking about what they believed and they tried to you know come on join the church and mm -hmm. all this stuff but it's it's not hard to talk to those type of people but it's really hard to humble yourself to get to that position so i know that a lot of people don't like to go looking for handouts and they won't go ask their church or their local organizations but then they turn around and have no problem like you said getting on to welfare so where where's that line for some people how how do you bite your tongue and go to the government and ask for help but you can't bite your tongue and ask your community for help seriously right. yeah i don't understand that. that that always baffled me yeah me too because i but i just assume it's because the government is almost like the government has no face and they can just go and nobody knows them so they don't feel as I guess maybe ashamed I don't know some people are not ashamed like I've met some people you know grandma mom and now them are all on it and grandma mom and the it taught her you know how to get on there and you only you, you get the most and 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, and like how many kids she needs to have to work. You know, I'm just like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Like if you put that much effort into a job, I mean, imagine how much more money you would have. <laughs> I mean, you, yeah. Whatnot, but it's it, everybody's looking for that easy, that easy road, and they, they, some people have found it, and I'm not ready to take that road yet. I guess I have to learn the hard way. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to. Like, I don't want that either, because basically, there's a. I don't remember who said it, but there's a phrase that's like, whoever, if they have enough power to give you everything you want. They, you've given them enough power to take everything from you too, and so I'm just I like, I don't know who it's from. Yeah, I don't know. It's probably Benjamin Franklin. He he says a lot of stuff I agree with too. But <laughs> um, he owns all the quotes. <laughs> yeah, he owns all of them. Yeah. So I'm just like, when I first heard that, I was like, oh, that's a good point. So mm -hmm. you know, um, if they can give it to me, then they can take it away, or just stop giving it to me, and then where am I? So for me, I was like, I don't ever want to, uh, you know, I don't ever want to be on welfare. And the funniest thing is, is like, uh, at one point my parents divorced and we were somehow even poorer <laughs> and it doesn't even help everybody because we went with our dad. So, um, if you're a single dad, no, they laughed at him and told him there's no help for you here and would not let him fill out paperwork or anything else like that. So, yeah, so... <laughs> It, but even just from us coming up, the laws have changed dramatically. Um, I know that Pennsylvania used to be a commonwealth, and pretty much that meant woman gets whatever she wants. If she walks into the courtroom, say goodbye, because she's going to get whatever she wants. But that hmm. now has even changed. So a lot of people have focused on, you know, father's rights and, and getting the fathers involved. And I was super excited about that, even dealing with, um, a deadbeat father myself, not mine, but my daughter's. Yeah. And, um, you know, we tried to give him every opportunity to step up and step in and it just didn't work out. So eventually, you know, we got custody and my, my husband adopted her. But up until that point, man, they gave him everything, every opportunity you could possibly think of to be involved, to, you know, help her out, to, you know, do something. Yeah. So they are giving them chances. Yeah, well, that's good. I mean, I know, I know that that situation does happen. And then there's other situations like my dad where he couldn't get help. And there's other situations I've talked to other guys where it's like, I'm doing everything I can do. I'm doing everything the court will let me do. Uh, she won't, you know, then she won't let him have visitation. You know, so all of these situations are things that happen. And that's why I'm like, we just need a small government. And then we need like to take each situation by what it is versus just assuming the woman's virtuous or just assuming the man's virtuous or just assume, like don't assume let's just get some facts and see what's really going on you know because like you said they're huh sorry the hardest part getting the facts yes yeah it is you almost have to just everybody hire a was a, a an investigator to actually watch you and then come back to the court or something you know i don't really know how is this a, this? Everybody has body cams. Since we're putting them on all, on all the police officers, let's do body cams. Yeah, yeah, something, right? If you're gonna, you know, split up or whatever. But it's just, it's hard to talk about people because they just want to think about, well, the guy's obviously wrong. It's like, okay, look, that is true sometimes, but it's also true sometimes that the woman's absolutely crazy, yeah, <laughs> and she's violent or whatever, or like. For example, my mom, when we were growing up, she wasn't per se violent, but she was very manipulative and she would just, uh, you know, when we were very young, she would just leave us. So I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. And then like, she would never bring guys back to the house, but she would always go out and that's what she was doing. She was going off to be with other guys and she would, you know, she's had my dad in jail a couple of times, you know, she's the crazy one here. <laughs> You know, so, um, but because she's the woman, people just automatically go, well, what did your dad do to make her do that? I was like, literally nothing. She just, this is just who she is. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't like, I wish we could just take it. I really wanted to take it from, cause you know, sometimes they're both crazy too and oh, yeah. they need to be with grandma or something, you know? So uh, I just want to take it from the facts and not just make this assumption that one person is more virtuous than the other, you know? 
So yeah, I don't. I, yeah. If we could just you know apply that throughout, that would that would be really awesome too. You know, not even just in child situations or court situations, but just in, in general dealings with each other. That would be nice if we could all just take a step back and say, hey. Is this what's really happening, or is this what I'm perceiving to be happening? Because those are two totally different things. Yes, exactly. I think that that sort of thing where we we have all these assumptions first, and then we just work on the assumption versus, oh, something. Like this right here, when I found your channel, I was like, oh, this is cool. This is against my assumptions that I've been making and everything. So that's why I'm very excited to talk to you. So that's why I'm a little scattered. So sorry about that. But it's okay. <laughs> I, I've got a little butterfly myself. You're <laughs> the second interview that I've done. And, um, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm prone to ranting myself. So I'm like, boy, she's going to have some editing to do on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I probably won't edit it much because I just want, I want people to see, you know, reality. Like, I'm nervous, so my voice is shaking a little bit. That's just real. That's just who I am. But I like having these convers- I like having hard conversations with people I may not necessarily agree with, as long as we can do it, you know, nicely. <laughs> I'm not looking for a fight. I just, <laughs> maybe explain to me where you're coming from, you know? people out there to fight with, and, and it is too early in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, so let's maybe get on to this other this one that's sensitive maybe abortion so I know a lot of people who you know they're hard for hard against and then I know a lot of people who are in the middle where it's like well you know if you're just a zygote and you do the morning after maybe that's okay and it's it it ranges really from the spectrum like Christians people I know who are just atheistic people I know who are other religions it just it swings so i was just wondering as somebody who's a conservative wiccan i hope i'm getting that right conservative wiccan right yeah are you more nuanced are you for or against like what what does that look like for you you know and, and this is where actually one of my biggest um divides comes from with the conservative uh movement and I will explain it for you. Okay. This is a taboo subject that I usually don't talk about. I always try to stay away from it. But in my honest opinion, if we are talking about taking government down to its smallest faction, I don't see where you can have a political opinion on abortion because technically that is your body. It is a procedure that is between you and your physician. It should be a decision that the physician makes for themselves. So if you have no, no moral qualms with it, how am I to have a moral qualm in your name for a procedure that you choose or you don't choose to participate in? How can I also have an opinion upon what you choose to do with your body? Now, again, we talk about respecting life. Absolutely respect life. I think that's a great thing. But I believe what you said was also correct. There are also points in time where we are now debating on whether or not it's a life. Now, depending on who you talk to, they'll tell you, oh, it's a this, or oh, it's a that, or oh, it's a that. Okay. I understand at this point it's a life form. But mm -hmm. as you said, what type of life really is a life full of suffering? You know, a lot of Catholics and Christians, and that's kind of my only beef with them is, well, but life is still so precious. Life is still so precious. I've seen a lot of kids go through some hard lives. They don't make for good adults. They don't really come back and contribute. And I get it. There are some star cases out there who have beat all the odds and they grow into something amazing. But realistically, that doesn't happen very often. So if we're talking about giving individuals rights, if we're talking about all these things, my point goes to how would you know? If it's not funded by the taxpayer's dollars, if it's a personal choice of the physician and the person, what, what would I know about it? I wouldn't know if you had one or you wouldn't know if I had one or the person down the street or whatever. Nobody would be talking about it. Nobody would be kind of going on. Now, in the say, you know, kind of turn the cheek here, when you look at specifically the black community being targeted to be pro abortion, yeah. that's where I really start to have the problem. And like you said, you kind of like pull back the reins and say, well, wait a second. 
I don't want to target people to have this procedure done. I don't want them to use it as birth control. Okay. I don't think that it should be used um, as a way to manipulate your significant other. I believe that you're adults. You've now both put yourself into this position. You should have a um, conversation about it. And yeah, you know what? If the guy doesn't want it done and you do, have the baby and let him take it then. You either pay child support or sign your, your rights away. And I know that that requires us to be on a higher level of evolution. We're just not there yet as a, as a human race, even. So, you know, it's a couple different things. When you think about the numbers, um, you know, like I said, with the black community being targeted and, and realistically, they should have taken over the majority a long time ago. But I feel like they've just done so many abortions that they don't even realize they're hurting their own community. And instead of saying, hey, guys, why don't we take a look at how many people we've actually destroyed and, and rethink our values, they take it as, as a rights issue. So I hear your argument. I, I get it. You do have the right to your own body, the right to your own health care. But at this point in time, my tax dollars are paying for it. My tax dollars are funding it. So I get where everybody else is coming from, too. And, um, you know, again, I think it's a personal decision. If you can live with it, if you can morally be okay in your heart of hearts and you know you're okay with it, who am I to tell you now, realistically speaking? Okay, yeah, and I've heard that argument, too, as well. Like, uh, and then usually, let me see, um, usually with that argument comes along, um, but at a certain point, it's just a no. Right, right, so. right, right. Well, yeah, I was going to say, we didn't get to determine limits, but that's a great point. Um, obviously, if, you, if it takes you nine months to make a decision, there's a problem. You know, like I said, as soon as possible, as soon as yeah. possible. You, you miss and, and you have a conversation and you're like, okay, we can do this. This is how we're going to do it. Or we can't do this. What are we going to do from here? Because even after your cutoff point, it's not like you still don't have options, you yeah. know, other than just termination so if you're gonna if you're gonna grow to a certain point you might as well just finish it out and put that kid up for adoption you know and and that point be prepared for the consequences because (laughs) you know i don't know too many kids who are like yeah i don't i don't want to know where i come from or anything like that right you know they're, they're gonna come looking for you so just you know be aware of that yeah, and yeah, that's something else I don't really hear talked about on either side, really, is that, like, uh, you know, I am, so, we agree and we disagree on some parts there, <laughs> where I'm totally against it, uh, because of the, um, the whole thing where I was like, well, you know, we limit, we do limit what we can do with ourselves, so for me, that'd be one thing that I would limit, but, um, it was kind of, it was refreshing to hear you say, you know, but if, you know, the guy that you had this baby with, <laughs> it's his too, you know, uh, maybe you should let him raise his kid. Uh, so I agree with you there. That's totally something I agree with. Um, and then like, I'm still kind of going through the small government aspect of it. Cause like I said, like we do have laws that are like no murder, no stealing, no lying. Yeah. No lying. And, uh, something else is a fourth one. Well, anyway, all of that is, um, <clears throat> it limits us. Like we, we get, I don't want to say punished, corrected, whatever, if we do these things, cause we all think that it's wrong. So for me, the, the abortion lies in like the murder thing, but then other people have talked to me and they're like, well, but what about the, the, the mother is in trouble. I'm like, well, you know, what we used to do is we just tried to save both of them. And if somebody didn't make it then very very sad but that's the way it goes sometimes not as much now but that's the way it goes sometimes so that's kind of where i'm at there um with that but that was that's cool that's uh i did not expect that answer (laughs) so i mean honestly with with being wicked a lot of people would be like well you're wicked and you know don't you support life i say yeah absolutely i support life and i respect life but there's a big difference between being conscious of a death and living a life of suffering as opposed to not existing at all. So when we talk about reincarnation, 
um, you know, a good thing to ask yourself is what, at what point does your body receive the salt? And for me, I believe that once you are physically expelled, that's when you should receive your soul and that's when you go into the into the world as, as a baby. But if you're oh. in the womb and there's really no soul and all you're doing is kind of reversing, like I said, it's early enough to more or less stop the process from progressing, let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. Then, I mean, are you really committing death or are you just stopping nature? We, we manipulate nature to our own means all the time. Yeah. So when I look at it from that aspect, I'm kind of like, hmm, did you just stop a process that was going to happen or did you kill somebody? Like, to me, I could kind of look at it like you just kind of stopped the process. Now, like you said, when you're talking about a fully formed heart, lungs, brain, baby, that's where you're like, well, wait a second. Mm, there might be a chance that there might be a soul in there. Now, when it's when it's so teeny tiny, I can see you stop in the process. But now that it's ready to come out, yeah, no, let's let's not let's not make that worse though for ourselves because it's it's disgusting if you ask me. I mean, when they were yeah. talking about actually delivering babies and killing them, like that's where I I absolutely disagree with you, and you have absolutely no right to do that. Right. Whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. I'm there as well. Uh, I've heard other people say, you know. Well, when do we get a, uh, like, uh, when do we get our veins, like a blood system, basically? Because they, other people I've talked to believe that you don't receive a soul until you have, like, a, until you receive blood. I was like, that's interesting. I never heard of that before. Um, yeah, it's a, supposedly, it's a, it's a Christian view. And I was like, I've never, <laughs> I've never heard that before. I don't know what that is. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, supposedly you don't, even you're not even human unless you have blood in you and i was like that doesn't really make any sense to me but all right (laughs) just a new view for me to know um so yeah along so long that people have to find new talking points to try to get their viewpoint across so you know not to say that they're making it up or anything like that but i think they're just trying to tilt your angle to make you look at it a little bit differently so that you know everybody's on the same page but i don't think we'll ever get a hundred percent on the same page with that unfortunately yeah i don't think so either just because of how we like the people i mentioned say that you don't have life until you have blood in you mm-hmm. um we're not gonna be on the same page because that's not how i see it and then you see it even differently and then i can talk to maybe even a different person and they're gonna see you know well, i don't think life begins at conception i think it begins you know, once you have a brain or once you have eyes or whatever. And so that sort of is uh, what I've seen in conservative circles now is that that is where they started talking more is like, okay, so where, where are you a person? Like when, when does this life begin, you know? And so that I think you're right is the reason why we're not all going to come together on it. But it seems like uh, there are portions of people who like uh, when they were talking, like you said about, we're just going to lay the baby on the table and then we're going to make a decision. Most people are very much like, oh, God, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as long as we can all look at a child on an operating table and say, that's a child, you know what? We're winning the game. That's, yeah. that's, a, that's a big win. But we can also, yeah. you know, kind of go into euthanasia with that as well. Um, at what point do you have the liberty to end your own life, to end your own suffering. Now, yeah. I'm not saying like what they did in Denmark with the girl who was depressed and right. her, her life. I'm talking about serious, not going to come back from this disease, illnesses, and, um, you know, cost of health care. Health care is a really big issue right now. So if you're talking about getting an extra six months of life, in my opinion, I do, it's not worth it to me. If I'm going to have to go through chemotherapy and doctors all the time and doing, I don't, I don't want to do it. I yeah. don't want to do it. Just leave me alone. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to leave. I'm going to live the rest of my life in peace. But there are some people who don't even want to do that. They just want to check out. So, you know, do I think that it's a good idea? Mm, no. Do I think that you should have the choice to? Sure. 
Under certain circumstances, absolutely, because I could never put myself into your position. I could never. And and it's very, very personal to each individual person. And that's why, you know, I think that if anywhere we need to pull back government, it's from the healthcare system. Yeah. Government has no business telling me what I can do with my body and, and you know, what I can put into it and what I can't put into it. So like it's and don't get me wrong i'm not all i don't want it how do i say this if you go too far conservative that's bad too like we need to be somewhere in the middle so i'm just like i am as i'm talking to people i'm trying to figure out like so what does that middle look like you know so road to travel (laughs) yeah because there's people who you know they disagree and if we're gonna have the freedom the um, the amazing freedom that America gives you that people are just literally willing to die to get in here to do mm-hmm. well that's because of the freedom that we have that's because they can say well I don't think that is a life well I think it is you know and have the conversation or whatever and um you know I love that I want to keep that sort of freedom but at the same time like I have my morals right so how yeah. am I gonna how do I do this with, and still keep Because I also think that level of freedom is part of, when I read the Bible, that is part of what's in there. So it's like, well, how do I do this (laughs) then? Because I've talked to like uh, liberal Christians and they're like, well, we want a theocracy. I don't want a theocracy. I don't want that. Uh, No, (laughs) that's just as, yeah, no, that's just as bad as like um, having a king to me. Yeah. So... Well, and, and you know, a, a lot of the um, newer, I guess, renditions of the Bible that had come out in that time frame were actually manipulated by the kings to keep the subjects in order. And that was it. If, if the king said, well, you know what, I read the Bible today and um, God said, if you don't follow me, then something bad's going to happen to you. A lot of people, you know, very quick to just, okay, we're going to do what, you told, what you're told. And... That's manipulative, in my opinion, Mm -hmm. and I don't think that that's really the intent of the Bible whatsoever. I think the Bible was written, like you said, as a moral standpoint and a guide for a living. And hey, look, look at all these wonderful stories that we've collected. Look at all these things that these people have done. And to compare their travesties and, and the troubles that they had to go through to your own life so that you could say, hey, you know, I didn't have to choose you know, between splitting the baby between two people. I didn't have to kill my own brother. I didn't have to build this ginormous ark and get all these animals together. You know, all I've got to do is get up every day and be nice to my fellow humans and do what's right for for everybody. And I I think a lot of people um, don't take that away from the Bible. For, for whatever reason. They try to be very literal, and instead of looking at their own lives in comparison, they're very quick to look at other people's lives and say, well, you're not living by this law. You're not doing this. And you say, well, wait a second. You shouldn't be judging me anyways. So, you know. Yeah, and that. there is that funny, I think that's funny too, because so at one point I had a friend, I was like, well, none of these things are biblical or whatever. She goes, yeah, but they're not Christians. So they're not going to follow that. I was like, oh yeah. I don't know why it didn't like, I'm like, but if this, so like, I was like, but if we think this is true, shouldn't we do this? And she's like, no, even the Bible says that, you know, people are not going to follow God just because it says it's right. I was like, oh yeah, that's true too. And you sometimes, I, uh, this is when I I first became Christian. I was like, so you know how, I don't know if you experienced this, but maybe you have, but like when, when you come across somebody who's just like fresh, they just got saved and they're, they've got like this, or at least I did, you've got like this zeal and you just want to tell everybody and you're just like, I found this thing that's awesome and I want, I think you should do this. And you're like, no, definitely do this. This is what's going to work. And you don't know a lot. <laughs> so <laughs> you haven't really read the Bible all that much. You don't understand that there's like a... There is some nuance to it. Like, people are allowed to do what we would be considered wrong. Yeah, I mean, because they don't... Why would they 
follow it if they don't think it's true. Like, it's just logical, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but when you're in that, when you're first in that, you're very emotional. So you're just like, no, do it this way. And it's like, no, I mean, they have a right to choose not to do that. They can, they can do the wrong thing. <laughs> you really do, because you know what? I'm the exact phrase, too. They, have, they come out with such a refreshing zeal for life. They're, they're, they're completely renewed head to toe. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I'm saying that we need to um, find some more ways to empower people. <laughs> like, you know, let's let's get some government people like Christians. Come on, guys. We need some of your your hype up, your your pep talks to go into this, this government. Make people care about government the way they care about the Bible after they're done talking with you. I think that would be awesome <laughs> for yourself. Um, you know, you mentioned now a couple times that you that you were a witch and um, what what's the opposite process look like? What does, what does going pagan then back to, uh, you know, monotheism look like? <laughs> <laughs> well, that process, well, how do I say it? So I was an atheist first and then I became a pagan just because, how do I say this? So I was, I've always been somebody who's looking around trying to figure out what's real, right? Mm -hmm. So we have all these stories uh, I don't want to say that because, well, how do I say this? So I was reading Greek mythology, Chinese mythology, all of this mythology, right? And what we have found just, if you stepped outside of mythology, is a lot of mythology has a kernel of truth to it. So it's either trying, yeah, just a little, yeah. It's either trying to teach you a moral lesson or there really was this guy that lived here who did these amazing, incredible things. Maybe not as incredible as the story says, but this guy's real. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I was When I was reading Greek mythology, um, I was like, okay. So I know Zeus doesn't live on Mount Olympus because you can go to the top of Mount Olympus and he is not there. But <laughs> um, when you look at them... They're like uh, the most, dis they're like a family, but the most like dysfunctional family you've ever met, right? <clears throat> but it's because they're representing like all of our, um, all of our emotions, the good and the bad. I'd never seen that before. Um, in my video that I make where I was like going from pagan to Christian, it was like one of the things that uh, I say that I didn't grow up in a Christian household, but there was a lot of like iconography, I guess you could say. Like they talked Christian, but the principles didn't stick. And so there wasn't, we were doing things the opposite way of what the Bible said to do a lot of times. So I was like, okay, so you guys are either in name only, <laughs> okay, or you don't know what it says, or you don't care what it says or something. So I immediately rejected it. And so I was just reading stuff, like just trying to figure out. And then I found out that the myths had kernels of truth. So I was like, well, if this has a kernel of truth, I'm going to read some more. So I read some more. And then that is how I kind of got into, like, uh, I found some of the Wiccan books. I was like, okay, well, this is just sort of general, like, uh, have you seen the books? They're just, they're like, you could be a Wiccan if you like nature and you think there's a higher power. I was like, okay, that's me. I think there might be a higher power and I like nature. So I got into it that way. And then I got into like, so right now people are called themselves, or even when I was re doing research 20 years, they're calling themselves neo-pagans. So like, like a, I, I still don't really quite understand what exactly that is, but I do Realistically speaking, I, I, I think that they um, needed a way to divide themselves from your traditional pagans because they kept, everybody kept bringing back the debate of, well, you're just Catholics in disguise. You, you guys follow the same holidays, you do the same things, and, you know, the only thing that you disagree on is, you know, who, who you're praying to. But I, I think they put that distinction. <laughs> so that's why they come up with that, that neo oh. you're, not, you're not with them, is their way of saying it <laughs> saying that okay so i never considered myself a neo-pagan because i was like no like i believe that there are gods and goddesses out there and then i started reading about like uh most pagan uh cultures have a 
top tier mama, basically. <laughs> you know, they have the goddess. Most of them do. Uh, in Irish mythology, she is called... Nope, forgot. So sorry, I have a book for that. <laughs> but, you know... <laughs> so many i tell people as i'm like i don't even take this out i have two two i i lean my moon goddess and i have breed my goddess of protection that's all i need <laughs> yeah see and that yeah and so so there are so many and it's like well they must i just believe that they must all be real either if, if it's just because it's in here or because because you know it's a representation of our emotions or because there is actually a being out there trying to teach us something about ourselves so that's how i kind of got there it was like okay so everybody is also saying that there's a major mama so i was like then there's a major mama and you know depending on who you you know talk to depends on how she created the world or where what part she played in it because not in, in all of them it's not just her and in all and some of them i should say it's not just her and some of them it's her and then the male counterpart and then once they have one child that child helps them create stuff like that so i was like oh that's cool i like that <clears throat> and then so that's kind of how i got started i was like okay so i know that these have kernels of truth in them i know that i can have I, there's all kinds of information and at that point i'd already just completely rejected Christianity because I was like, I don't think, I don't think this works because I couldn't, I never saw anybody or talked to anybody where it did work. I talked to a lot of people who are like, yeah, we're Christians, but then, so for example, Christianity has, uh, guidelines for money. They didn't follow them. So why, if you think this is real, why aren't you following it? Does it not work? You know? So that's the kind of thought process I'm having. Well, I've seen, you know, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> my biggest issue, I think, is really the um, ask for forgiveness part. You know, it, it kind of almost feels like a lot of people live with, with the idea that, um, you know, God is this wonderful, merciful being. And as long as you ask for forgiveness, <laughs> everything will be forgiven. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. hold up one second here. Because we were taught in, 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 you know, in catechism, it didn't work like that. You were born with original sin. It didn't matter if you sinned or you didn't sin. You were, you were tainted by sin, period, end of story. There were only a couple ways to get rid of it. When you were baptized, when you were um, first communed into the church, when you confirmed into the church, and then your last rites. So yeah, you could go and you could um, confess your sins, and you could partake of the body and blood of Christ, and you could be for, forgiven for those sins. But if you didn't receive your last rites on your deathbed, no entry to heaven for you. So that's what really struck me different between the, the Catholics and the Christians is the Christian God is so nice. I mean, everything you do, it's so great. and You could be forgiven, and no matter what you do, you're always dad's favorite. In Catholicism, it's no, no. He demands that you do certain things. And if you don't abide by those Ten Commandments and you don't do what you're, you're not getting into heaven, period. It's not going to happen. So I think that kind of goes into the born again Christians having so much zeal because depending on how they were raised or what type of values that they were given by, and they both read from the same Bible, mind you. So right. just the two interpretations, I think that's where Christians are like, well, hey, the old God is gone. The new God is amazing. Hey guys, look at this. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. And you know, what's funny about that is even, so even when I became a Christian, I wasn't like, well, I'm going to follow this church because I had all these questions because like you said, you can talk to a Catholic and it is a very different religion than if you were to say, like, talk to a Methodist or something. It's very different. So I was like, okay, this is not going to work because no matter it seems like no matter what even you can talk to atheists and they're all different you know so everybody is just doing this as best as they understand it so like i'm just gonna get a bible i'm gonna read it for myself and do some what i usually like to do is go okay here's a word uh what is this actual word because this is written in two different languages aramaic and um greek so what's the what's the greek word what's it say what's it mean and because i do that a lot of the things that I believe are not taught in church 
or they teach it differently or something like that. So <laughs> I like, <clears throat> I think a lot of people get saved, find Jesus, whatever, you know, phrase you want to use. And then they don't do any studying themselves because like you said, the Catholics are all fire and brimstone. You're just evil. You're going to die. And then you come out here and other Christians are like, no, forgiveness always. It's, and what it really is, is like, it's a median again, <laughs> where it's more like your, your parent always loves you. You could be an ex murderer and they're still going to love you, <laughs> but <laughs> They're not going to say, it's okay, you're an axe murderer. They're not going to say that. They're going to say, why did you do this? <laughs> I didn't treat you to do this. You know, I, I didn't have you thinking, do this. I had you thinking, go out and change the world for a positive. And that's right. more like what I see in the Bible where God's like, why are you doing this? <laughs> this is not how I made you. I made you for good works. You know, stop doing this. Go over here and do this. Like, <laughs> right. absolutely, absolutely. And it, it is. You, you get into religion what you or you get out of religion what you put into religion. So mm -hmm. you know, that's it. I've now come to a higher level of understanding where I'm like, is it realistically projections after death? Mm -hmm. Is it what's what's privy to you in, in your heart? You know you're a good person. So are you going to project yourself an everlasting heaven? In your heart of hearts, you know you're a bad person. Are you going to project yourself an everlasting torment? Um, will I have the chance to choose a, a, another life after this one? Will I indeed come back, be reincarnated? Like so many different religions believe that they come back. Um, you know, I, I, that's where I think you, an atheist, you know what, you want oblivion, you got it, baby. So <laughs> I think, I think that's more or less where I'm at right now, where I'm like, you know what, I got no qualms with you because you're going to get what you get and I'm going to get what I get. And if we see each other on the other side and you get to tell me, I told you so, I'll, I'll shake your hand and say you win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I've, I've heard that argument too from, or not argument, but I've heard that point of view as well, where... Christians at a certain point are just like, I believe this. If it's true, then I'm going to be fine. If it's true and you don't, you're not going to be okay. So I'm tackling you now <laughs> to kind of get you to think about it, right? So well, um, let's put it this way. If I had a choice after I die, either go to a Catholic God or a Christian God, I hope it's the Christian God because he's definitely definitely gonna let me into heaven now yeah. the catholic god is not gonna let me into heaven for worshiping worshiping false gods before him <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah i hope it's the christian one too because i i've been to a catholic church and i like a lot of their i guess this comes from more of my because i was like uh, a witch for a while and like uh they have a lot of the because when they came over they're like okay we're gonna take all the pagan stuff and make it ours now so they have a lot of that, and that made me feel comfortable a certain way. You know what? I'll, I'll stop you right there for just one second. A lot okay. of people, they hate that. They hate whenever you tell them, hey, guys, you do realize you took a lot of our traditions. Yeah. <laughs> and and our, our, our things that we do, and we still do those things if you just call them something different. So thank you for saying that. <laughs> oh, yeah, but I mean, it's true. Like, cat... Christianity doesn't have a concept of let's celebrate Christ's birth. It just doesn't. It, you don't. That's great. He was born. I mean, it's awesome. But what we celebrate is more that he resurrected. Like, that's actually what we're supposed to be celebrating. And it's not like one time a year. It's, you know, every week when we get together. So that's what I'm saying as far as like a Christian, any other Christian I talk to is going to be like, no, but Christmas is special and it's awesome. I was like, it, it's fun. I'll give you that. But it's not biblical. Like, it's not, you know, I don't care if somebody does celebrate Christmas and they get all into the nativity and stuff. I think I even have nativity somewhere. But it's not, like, it's not what Christianity is. Christ that came from when the Catholics came over and pagans, you know, we, they, or I used to, and I guess you still do, actually, um, <laughs> um, celebrate the, uh, you know, the equinoxes and the changing of the seasons. That's why we have trees. That's why we have wreaths. That's why we have all this stuff. It's not because Christianity thought all that up. It's because the Catholics came over and said, well, we're going to use what you have 
and to try and get you to come over here. And I think that was a horrible misstep, actually. But, <laughs> I mean, it's just true. Like, you can't... Whatever, I guess. <laughs> I don't like it when people get mad. <laughs> you can't change the past. And it yeah. is what it is. Um, and, and the traditions are so intertwined that, you know, I, we celebrate Christmas. I mean, I don't, I don't call it anything different because it's easier just to do it that way. But, you know, you sit the kids down and you say, okay, this is what they believe and this is why we're doing it. And here's the time of the year and the equinox and this is the end of the harvest and we're saying goodbye to the light and, you know, getting ready for the dark winter and yada, 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 all that stuff. So, yeah. um, you know, I think it's a learning experience for everybody just to, like you said, get an idea of where your traditions came from, know why you do the things that you do and where they might have, um, you know, been used prior to this. Yeah, for sure. And like, uh, I don't know, like, like you said, you sit, sit the kids down and explain what's going on. And then there's this whole thing where now Christmas is just cultural. Because yes. like in Japan, they have Christmas in Japan, but they're not, they're, they're Shinto or whatever. And then Christmas in Japan for them is KFC. Like, that's their Christmas meal. So it's like, at this point, Christmas is really just cultural now. Everybody, you can celebrate Christmas. Doesn't even matter what. <laughs> that's, that's the funny thing. And now they're trying to pull them out of schools and things and be politically correct. And it's like, well, wait a second. The Catholics never, or the Christians never said that you couldn't celebrate with them, actually. They'd much rather have you celebrate with them then not celebrate with them. So yeah. I, I don't understand what the big, big debacle is. It never, never bothered me. The, the holidays or the um, observances or anything like that, I never, never had a problem with it whatsoever. Now, when I was younger, um, certain, certain trigger words when you're first coming into the craft and people tell you, you know, well, you're baptized, so you can't convert. It's like, <laughs> I want to talk to you. Just, just, just stop. I can do what I want to do, and I get what you're trying to say, but just stop. You know. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When when I was a, a witch, I was people were like, "You celebrate Christmas?" I was like, "Yes, yeah, sorta." I more celebrate that. You know, it's the changing of the seasons now. I just sort of explained it like that. I'm celebrating that the seasons have changed. Things that are old are things that are. Um, awake right now are going to go to sleep. I still actually say that. I'm like, trees are going to sleep now. Um, <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, and... A lot of, a lot of the uh, traditions as well, because who am, who am I to go and, and tell my kid, you know what, no, you can't have any presents because technically our religion says that there's no presents. It's just, you know, a spiritual awakening and, you know, let all the other kids have presents. Like, you know, we didn't have Jesus and crosses and things like that, but we did presents. Come on now. Is it really that hard to buy your kids a couple things and, you know, make them feel included over religion for, for all things? Come on now. Yeah, like what, like you said, even, like even in the, it doesn't matter which side you're coming from, presents are a thing. It's really, <laughs> part of me, I joke a lot. I was like, this is really just an excuse to give everybody lots of presents. And that's okay because everybody likes presents. <laughs> Yeah, like Halloween, I get a lot of flack because I like to celebrate it. But for me, it's not the, it's not what it was anymore. No, it's about candy. Like, it's just, I've taken the like, sort of like the cultural root of it, I guess. And just been like, it's about candy. People are dressing up being silly. You know, that's what it is for me. And the, and you know, I can, I, with, with the people who believe in the Bible, I can have sort of a conversation about them about like, I'm allowed to do this because X, Y, Z. If you don't want to do it, you don't do it. Like, nobody's making you, like, celebrate this with me. Just go to your house and do whatever it is you want to do, you know? I like to watch... Well, I'm confused why they didn't like the, the kids going out and trick-or-treating because I'm like, well, wait a second. If you can see that there could possibly be evil spirits afoot and we're telling you a way to get rid of those evil spirits is to leave treats at the door and <laughs> put them in disguise and ward them off. Hey guys, it's a real easy, simple solution here. Put some treats on your door and ward off the evil spirits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that, that, is, that is a very confusing thing for me as well because having been 
uh, which, and then now coming into Christianity, really, so like uh, uh, what we were saying, the uh, the the Halloween time is really just where the if you're a pagan is really just where the veil is thinner. Not that they're not here other times. It's just easier to see them. You know, it's, that's what I understood anyway. And in Christianity, it's they're here all the time. They're just, they're just here. You're in a room. Guess what? It's you. It's not as empty as you think. It's you, your guardian angel, probably somebody else. And then also the Holy Spirit. And then, so it's like, I've never really understood what, what the, don't let your kids celebrate uh, Halloween because it celebrates devils. Well, if you look at, like you said, if you look at the tradition, it's not celebrating them. It's trying to get them to go away because <laughs> they're not supposed to be here. They're supposed to be over there. And then... At the same time, it's like, but we also understand that there's like negative and positive spirits, if you will. Um, we just believe that there are fallen angels and good angels or whatever. So, and that they're here all the time. They never leave. So I don't, I don't really understand that either. I think that's, I always chalk it down to these people have come out of, a lot of times these people have come out of like a certain level of <clears throat> witchcraft or whatever. And then they're like, this is all evil because they're trying to just say like just just to be careful i think everybody should be careful they should know what they believe and why but you shouldn't just go off on the whole this is evil don't let people do it and then tell me why is because they're spirits but yes <laughs> all the time <laughs> yeah yeah and i think sometimes i think when you're trans if you're if i were to walk in and tell somebody I used to be a witch and I just became a Christian. I think sometimes there should be like, well, let's talk about that or something, you know, instead of just letting people wander around, I think there should be more care given to people who are transferring, I guess, or, or the other way. Even if I used to be a Christian and I wanted to be a pagan, I think the pagan should talk to them and be like, okay, well, let's talk about that because there's going to be some ideas that maybe you have that may be true, may be wrong. Let's just talk about that, you know. I don't I don't Everything think has a good mentor with everybody. Yeah, yeah. So I think uh like the church has this phrase uh, discipleship where you're supposed to sit down and talk to them when they become a new Christian. You're supposed to walk next to them. You're supposed to... That doesn't happen really, but it's what's supposed to happen, you know. Right, right. So I think more of that probably would be good. I remember something about a sponsor. They talked about that and uh, tried to get me to join the youth group. And oh, come on, I'll sponsor you. No, thanks. I'm okay. I know what I need to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, at that point, you've made up your mind. And at that point, it's just sort of like, well, what are you thinking? You know, as something else I try to talk to people about, it's like at a certain point, somebody has just made their decision. They just, excuse me, and they're not... Nothing you say is going to be like, oh, I've never thought of that before. No, they probably already have and they have an answer for it, you know? That's right. So at a certain point, you have to just go, okay, you can either just pray for them and you should always still be friends with them. Like I've had, I used to work with the youth and some part of the conversation I've had to tell, have with people with them is like, okay, Christianity is not telling you to not be friends with them. Christianity is just saying, maybe they're not the friends that you go to and say, hey, pray for me. Hey this because right. they don't if you go to your atheist friend and go hey pray for me they're going to be like well no but positive vibes you know <laughs> so it's just it's like a common sense kind of thing or they'll turn around and say it's not that big of a deal <laughs> yeah yeah and it is to you you know to you you have this certain world view so like right. you know if i don't i don't even know what a what that would look like for maybe somebody who was pagan instead like i don't know maybe the moon bothered you or something like i don't know i don't want to be disrespectful so i'm not gonna say that but you know it's just it's sort of like people think that this is like a hard no and for some things there are hard no's but for other things it's like all he's asking you to do is the common sense thing where you know your atheist friend is not going to pray for you. So just don't go over there and ask them to do that <laughs> because they already have what they believe. A fish to fly. Don't, don't expect, you know, somebody to, to, to be something that they're not. That's yeah. All. It's, you know, it's sort of like there, it's sort of like the Bible saying, look, the people who don't believe this are not going to help you 
in the way that you want them to because they don't believe it. So go to the people who do. Like, I don't know. It'd be like if I would need help getting a car and I went to a librarian. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> they... She can give you a book about the cars, but she can't help you pick a car. Yeah, or she can't help me fix it or whatever. She, uh, this over here maybe could help you, you know? They don't, I don't know. So. The do yourself section, realistically. <laughs> that was a good analogy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's like, I don't know. I just, a lot of the common sense seems to be missing a lot of times. That's why I was so happy you were willing to talk to me. I'm like, yay, maybe somebody can just talk to me and we can have a nice conversation and <laughs> it could be different, you know? And, and you know what, that's true too, just uh, common sense has gone downhill. Common sense is not common anymore. That's true too, and sad because a lot of times it's just, you just have to sit there and think about it for 30 seconds. I was telling somebody I was talking to, you know, just give me 30 seconds. Just, I'm going to tell you my point and just think about it for 30 seconds. That's it. And then eventually what ended up happening is we ended up having longer conversations and then like he when we were talking it was like we would have these pauses where we're both kind of thinking about what the other one said and it made for a better conversation and we didn't get as you know upset because we're talking about you know government and all this stuff that we've been talking about and <clears throat> he would get highly like I, I guess he's high i don't know if he's high strong or what but he would get highly upset at just when i would just be like you know, obviously we're supposed to help people, but I think it should be a way smaller system than it is, like welfare. And like, you know, even the Bible says, the Bible says to do that like three different kinds of ways. So if you're a Christian, then it's, to me, it's like, okay, so there needs to be something set up where people who need it can come get it. And, it, and so, but it's not what we're, what we have now, because now people who don't need it on that to only help those who want to help themselves <laughs> no. the, 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 the whole thing was teach a man to fish and, and you won't have to worry about him feeding himself because he'll be able to, to, to feed himself so you know yes people need help but at what point does help become reliance yeah you know, help is help reliance is reliance and Ultimately, you know, if, if, if you have to rely on the other people to survive, we go back to that, they can take it away. Or they can expect other things from you. So, yeah, you don't have to do anything for that now, but what are they going to ask you to do later? Yeah, when it becomes, yeah, and so that's why I was like, it needs to be the people around you. Because the people around you know if you're blind or something. They they know you. They, they want to help you because they know you. And they understand, oh... This person can't do X, Y, Z because they're blind or because they're lame or they're old and, uh, you know, age has not been nice to them or whatever. So, um, but he was like, but usually conservatives want to take it all away. And I was like, I don't really know any conservatives like that, but okay. <laughs> it's just the, just like you said, common sense isn't as common. If you hear somebody go all of it gone, you know, they're probably talking out one side of their mouth that they're not, you know, really saying anything. Because that's never been the case. It's never been the case where we were like, no, just go die on, over there. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know, the only people that I could even, and, and um, I mean no disrespect to them, the only people that I could attempt uh, an argument like that, that in my opinion, would be the libertarians. And that would be for the simple fact of, you know, they, they literally believe in that much liberty. They do not want forced in any way, shape, or form to pay for the existence of another human being. That's where I'm kind of like, pause. I can't go to that side of the spectrum because that's way too far yeah. for me. I get what you're saying. You don't want to help these people out, but but if we're going to evolve as a human race, if we're going to get over that hump, there are going to be the weaker ones always. So we're not getting rid of them. How do we bring them to our level? Yeah. We can't keep taking care of them, but we can't just let them die off either. So where's a happy medium? Yeah, exactly. That's kind of where I'm at. And then the guy I was talking to was more, he was more over to where, no, the government needs to do it all. I'm like, I don't think so. I don't, we have been taking care of people who are lame or blind or can't talk or whatever 
for a long time, for as long as there have been people, I think there's only been like the Spartans maybe who took their kids off, like who were weak or whatever. And oh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> what the heck was the name of that hill? Wasn't that where Romulus and Remus came from? Or something like that. Yeah. I mean, so they're the only ones that I know of historically who did that. And they're gone now. So, I mean, it obviously is not a system that works all that well. So, no, I have to go look that one up too. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, you know, I don't, the, the whole thing, the thing about also the Christianity about all this is uh, where we were talking earlier about how your morals are what sets like your political thing. And a lot of people don't understand that there's moderation in Christianity. That's actually one of like the, the things that I talk to people the most is like, this is not all here or here. This is a lot of it. There's a lot of uh, nuance. And so, um, but people don't like to hear that. <laughs> they don't like to hear nuance. But to me, nuance is common sense. Like, obviously, I'm not going to tell somebody who has a deformity of whatever it is, who had nothing to do with that, by the way, that, oh, oh, well, you're screwed. So, well, <laughs> so, well, you know, I'm not going to do that, obviously, you know, and we, so. We'll just turn and say, oh, well, I think nuance is BS. No, no, it's yeah. not. I, oh, you're sidestepping the conversation or, or you don't want to give me a direct answer. No, it's just, it's not black and white. There's, there's a gray area that we must contest with. That's all there is to it. Yeah. And I don't know, like I, I used to be that way where I was like, no, it's either this or this. And then I started reading the Bible more and I was like, oh, okay, I was wrong again. <laughs> there's nuance <laughs> to stuff. There's even like, uh, there's the, like the big thing also about Christianity is like tithing. Well, I read this whole section of the Bible the other day where it's like, yeah, but if you can't get there, just go take the money where God tells you to go take it and spend it on yourself and like a priestess nearby. I was like, what? <laughs> so it's one of those things like, because I believe that though, you know, people are like, no, you're wrong. I'm like, no, it's right here. I understand you don't want to do it because it doesn't fit like the other stuff, but, or it does fit the other stuff, but they don't want to look at that other stuff either. So it's sort of like, God's not as concerned about the church building as he is about, you know, the people. So, but they're concerned about the building, you know, cause that's where everybody meets. I'm like, okay, well, come to my house then. <laughs> yeah. So that's like the common sense stuff, like common sense wise, if I can't get there, you're still not getting it. You know, so whatever, I guess, um, I kind of got off on that. Um, oh, this is something I've wondered about because, uh, when I was a witch, I didn't really, I couldn't vote at the time. I don't think. Yeah, I could actually, but I didn't do this. Do you, whenever, so when you're, it's coming down to voting, do you go to your uh deities and be like so what is this best choice here like i this or is it just more like you just think about it and just go do that yeah you know honestly um i have to do a lot of research on my own so i have a, 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 obviously a lot of candidates to pull from <laughs> that don't share the same religious beliefs as me nor do i believe that a higher power really needs to be involved in the election process whatsoever. So, I mean, it's more of a calming process to myself to seek clarity in their answers. So instead of asking, hey, you know, which one should I pick? Um, can you show me the truth? Can you enlighten me to their, you know, true personality? What are they going to be like once they get into office? Those, those types of questions as opposed to, you know, hey, who's better for this or who's better for that? Because honestly, you know, they could care less. <laughs> They're just there, you know, kind of dominion over over the, the world and, you know, lending their power and, and helping other people out. So in my, if you can just guide me to the truth, guide me to somebody who thinks the way that I think and, and has the same principles that I have and that's going to go in the office and do what they say they're going to do. I think the truth over personality is is one of the biggest things that we all need to start doing you know lip service is one thing 
when politicians are running for office, they're going to tell you a lot of things. And that's one of my biggest problems with the campaign trail right now. All these people talking about what they're going to do when they get in office. That's not even your job to do. You're promising oh, right. you things that you can't do <laughs> because it's not your job to do. So right there, I know you're lying. I don't even need to ask anybody about that. You're lying. You can't do that. So <laughs> um, okay. I think when I go, because I'm working the polls this year, I did work the um, midterm elections. I worked the runoff elections, and I will be in, in for the general election this year. And this is the first time I'm working the polls. So um, I'm more praying for safety, to be honest with you. Oh, okay. my goodness. Please don't let anybody come in and start fighting over this because it's, it's not worth losing your life over. Um, don't let me lose my life over it because my husband cannot handle these kids. <laughs> <laughs> he will be lost without me. <laughs> and, um, you know, at, at the end of the day, just expose some of the issues. If we can get through this election and expose some more corruption, and I think that we're moving in that direction yeah. to where the voting, you know, the, the mail-in votes and the in-person voting, it's going to be interesting. I think we're going to see a lot of truth come to life, and a lot of people aren't going to like it, and a lot of people aren't going to believe it, but we're all going to be here dealing with it, so... You know, those are the things that I'm going to focus on this time around. Um, I pretty much know everybody. You know, it, it's probably going to be a straight Republican ticket because there's not too much that I can get behind on the Democratic side of the aisle. And I'll be honest with you, minus looking at a couple libertarian people, I haven't really looked into the Green Party or the Tea Party or any, because I hear this year they have the most candidates on the ballot that from alternate places and i was like oh wow actually oh. I, haven't, I haven't even heard of any of these people the only person i really heard of is um joe jorgensen or whatever and i was looking at her platform and i was like man if you can get a couple tweaks into your thing I, i'd be on your bandwagon i might be able to help you out but it's that it's that you know like almost anarchy state that they're trying to achieve that i'm like hey We've been down that road before. Anarchy just leads back to big government. So let's not go down that road. Yeah, exactly. That is something that, like, when I'm emotional about what the um, government has done, I'm like, just burn it all down. I don't care. Blah, blah, blah. But then whenever I rate myself back in, I'm not as emotional that I, I'm like, I can't go there. <gasps> oh. <gasps> Sorry, my dog's in here. Sorry. <gasps> She's coughing. <laughs> my goodness. I'll have to give her her medicine. Um, but, um... Yeah, so I can't go there either. I just, when I'm emotional, I want to. But <laughs> but when I come back and I'm just thinking about things, I'm like, no, because, yeah, but like you said, anarchy leaves a big government because they're like, well, we'll swoop in and save you. <sighs> I don't well, want you to do that. It's so hard with the, with the <clears throat> riots going on because when you think about what we're actually supposed to do as citizens dissatisfied with our government and you're talking about going in and physically removing bad politicians from office but then you turn around and you have these citizens that are burning down their communities you're like man that's a bad look i don't want to look like that so okay yeah we don't want to physically go in and drag them out of their office so how do we how do we get this like you said where's that middle ground mm -hmm. oh well you go out and you go vote okay well that's all fine and good if we were pulling a lever having official paper ballots if we had a paper trail for all of this but we have gotten so out of control that it's almost impossible now to say yes i 100 percent believe the results of xyz or this election or that politician and especially with spygate i mean come on now yeah. with our own DOJ, our own FBI, our own people spying on American citizens. Like, we make jokes about it all the time. When is somebody going to be serious about, guys, this is what really happened. And mm -hmm. no, it's not okay. And what are we going to do about it? How do we stop it now? It's already been going on for too long. Yeah. We need to know. 
sorry. <laughs> um, um, whenever uh, people bring that up, I always bring up um, the Pinkertons because in the again Wild West. Sorry, I just I just always go back to that. But when the Wild West started developing, the the government, the federal government that was at the time, would send out these guys called the Pinkertons, and they would sit in saloons and just listen to people talk so that they would know where the populace was. And I was like. It just hasn't changed like that is what the federal government does like <laughs> that's why it needs to be super small so we can't hire people to sit out here and figure out what we're doing like <laughs> yeah. yeah you know ultimately at the end of the day if congress holds the purse strings why do we have you know the fed bank why do we have the doj why do we have the fbi the cia I get into it a lot with my girlfriend's um mom her actually i talk to her more than my friend but um you know she always she always brings it up well you know if we didn't have those agencies then our borders wouldn't be protected or we wouldn't be able to do this or we wouldn't be able to and i'm like pause for the cause for two seconds you could actually have a better home defense system if you enlisted the national guard of all the states to be the standing united states army yeah therefore you could have you know a, a process where they go into local law enforcement and progress up to the state defense system mm -hmm. and then should would anything happen all 50 states says we have this many people we have that many people you can put them all together and then the states as a collective go to the president and say hey we're ready to defend against this or go against that and then therefore actually put the chain of command into place what do we need these people for i'm i'm I don't care what they're doing in China. I mean, to be mm -hmm. honest, with you are really the, the average citizen over there, I don't care. I care about the communist government, sure. Now, if you want to put together, like you said, some, and realistically, that doesn't even make sense either because that's the president's job is to worry <laughs> about what's happening with other countries and what their people are doing. So I don't know where, where you give people in government jobs that they shouldn't have to take away from people who should have those jobs there's a list can we follow the list <laughs> yeah <laughs> like when you give your husband the grocery list and you're like all right guys we need this and he's like okay i got this and then you come back and it's all of his snacks and treats and you're like what happened to the list oh i lost it <laughs> exactly exactly so yes and what you said about the national guard is actually kind of funny because i just read somewhere where that's basically how we started out we started out each state had their own militia or whatever and then they were the ones that defended the border of the states and then when we wanted people to defend other states then we defended each other i'm like i'm like well <laughs> call the militia yes yeah <clears throat> and it's I, this is also gonna this is gonna this is gonna upset the base um it's not that i have a distaste for veterans okay a lot of our past veterans i hold way up here such a reverence for them yeah but in in this past iraqi afghanistan whatever the never-ending war if that's so what we want to call it now our veterans aren't really veteran-esque anymore, if you will. Okay. When you think about the issues that the people in Korea, the people in Vietnam, the people in World War II, the people in World War One, the type of fighting that they were dealing with, the in the trenches, the Viet Cong, the Agent Orange, I mean, we can go on and on and on and on about the travesties that these men saw, and they still came back home, and they still held their heads up, and they didn't go to the vet clinic with, to the to get their you know rations or to get their medical you know covered. They had such a I guess a sense of pride, if yeah. you will. Now we don't even ha we we don't even deploy some of these kids. They go to their boot camp and come out and say, "Salute me, I'm a vet. You should respect me, I'm a vet." And I'm like, "Whoa, dude." I respect that you went in for your country, but you did a four-year contract and you're getting paid for the rest of your life now off my tax dollars. And you're telling me that you're pissed off at somebody on welfare, excuse me, but um, you're, you're mad at somebody on welfare and 
you did boot camp? Really? Is that is, is that what you're hanging your hat on right now? That you ran some miles and carried a backpack? I'm sorry. Yeah. That's crazy. So, you know, I think that we give our veterans a lot, but there there's not I, I you know, and I'm not in the army, so maybe it's unfair <laughs> for me to judge them that way. But I don't feel that there is much right now that's given back to us for this national defense system to be as reverend as it is for lack of a better word you know i respect them don't get me wrong because i'm not an order taker that's why i didn't go to the army i would yes. fit much better at a militia than i would in an army situation and i've said this to to many people and a lot of my family and friends are in the army but i told them i said you know if it came down to it I defend this country till my dying breath. There's Mm -hmm. no question about it. I wouldn't have a single issue going in and standing with my neighbors and and being a force against an invasion. What I'm not going to do is take myself out of this country, put myself in a foreign land and tell those people how to live. Not going to do it. Yeah, there's a lot of... um... Uh, paperwork from like our founding fathers saying that we shouldn't be doing that and I've talked to some vets about it and they're just like well if we don't then we got another Hitler and I'm like well maybe maybe not I don't I, it's, it's a hard thing for me to talk to them about because for me it's like well the founding fathers set all this up whether you think this is a Judeo-Christian nation or not they each had their own say right so some of them were using the Bible. Some of them were using their own, just their own thought processes. Some of them were using their, like, uh, what is his name? There's one guy, he wasn't Christian. Like, he didn't care about the Bible at all. He was just like, this just makes sense. Let's not, let's do this. <laughs> I can't think of it. But, um. He is one of the, like, last founding fathers that you think of, too. <laughs> yeah, probably. Because right now I'm just kind of focused on Benjamin Franklin because he's like this how do I say this? He's not a Christian. He, he wasn't. He, but what he did do was he was, because a lot of people back then were raised on the Bible. That's how they learned to read and write and stuff like that. So he used a lot of the concepts in there. And so he, at, at certain points was like, it's the best and only book or something like that to start a nation on. And so, but he didn't believe in like the Jesus and all that. So for me, that's one of the better ways for me to understand, like, a lot of them didn't believe in Jesus, but a lot of them did think that the the Bible and a couple other books were like the books to start a nation on. And when you look at it, it's loud. So I'm looking at this going, well, our founding fathers using the Bible, using these other books of like common sense and just other things, set up this nation this way. And it works as well as it did. So maybe this uh this idea of don't go out there and get into these national wars and get you know don't be on other people's soil don't do that just worry about yours <laughs> and have a good defensive is probably a better thought process than well, we need to be out there in case there's another hitler i was like that. yeah i mean i think that the defense could be a proactive stance too instead of Here's the difference. <clears throat> if a country finds itself in a situation where they have spawned another Hitler and there is mass genocide going on, it shouldn't be our duty to go in un- uninvited. Now, if that, co- if that country comes to us and says, hey, look, a majority of our people want to overthrow this, even the people inside the regime want to overthrow this but they're now caught in the flow of traffic we would like to enlist your help that's fine but i'm not paying for the damage then that we cause because you asked for our help that's all yeah. i'm saying yeah yeah i don't like that either uh because i think didn't we um go in and rebuild some of i think it was world war ii we went in and rebuilt because we were, again, afraid with, like, the thing is, is everybody's afraid of having another Hitler, of another guy who's going to be like, well, I'm going to stoke the people, and then we're going to kill all these other people. I'm mean, like, well, I mean, that is going to happen regardless of if we're out there or not. Like, these guys are out there. 
So I don't know. I mean, I just, I'm like, I, I lean more towards what the founding fathers said than what the veterans say. And there is definitely an argument to what, to your point about how, you know, you go to boot camp for four years or you go to school, then you, you're out. Why? I mean, you know, you are getting paid because you're supposed to go out there and defend me or whatever. And you went to war for America. These people didn't do that. So I have, yeah, so I have had also that thought process as well as like, why, if you're not in the military anymore, why should I pay you for the rest of your life for going to school? (laughs) That doesn't make sense. (laughs) So... You know, it's one thing if you go back into, like you said, the National Guard, or if you go into the um, into the reserves or, or something like that. Okay, you know, I get it, but in in the same turn of cheek, eh, no, <laughs> for lack of a better word, no. Yeah. You know, this, that's what you want to do, and you want to say that it's an obligation to your country, then take it as a badge of honor for your country because I'm not out here. I don't want paid from my country to defend it. I don't want paid to speak about it. I just want to be out here representing a part of America that I represent and I'm going to defend it till I die and I don't need a badge on my chest to do it. I'm going to do it because I live in America and that's what I feel that I need to do. Yeah, and that's a lot of, that's what I would consider to be patriotism. <laughs> and like, you know, if whether you're in the military or not, you should be willing to, to do that. Just even if you want to look at it from like the most, uh, you know, a selfish sort of thought process. Like they said in Guardians of the Galaxy, why do you want to save the universe? Because I live here. <laughs> I live in the universe. Like I live in America. That's why I want to defend it. So, <laughs> um, that's right. And, and- <clears throat> We, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be having this conversation. We wouldn't be even going through the mess that we're going through now. We're still better off than most countries have been for years. Yes. So, I mean, you can cry all you want about how you think we're class or the no, classism argument is gone. We're on to racism now. Mm-hmm. So, I guys, we're on to racism. We're on to nobody's ever had good fortune here and everybody just hated each other all the time. Take a look in the mirror, guys, because you are America. So if you have a problem with that, then you need to look at yourself and what you're projecting to other people. Because if that's what you're getting back from your country, I don't think there's anybody to blame but yourself. Yeah, I'm kind of the same way. Like, uh, so the with the riots and everything, they're like, well, we have cops that, that hate us. I was like, well, these cops are coming from your area. Like, the people who are hiring these cops are people you voted in. Like change the way you're voting vote these people out uh you know i don't uh, i'm the same way i'm like well what I play again. yeah yeah like i don't know like i don't know like uh what has happened other than i mean i, I don't know that could be an even different video actually but um i think i've asked all my questions uh i think i had it on my phone here to try and keep track so i didn't uh <laughs> wander uh, off yeah I say, i'm pretty sure i think the only thing we didn't get really was to the um we talked about taxes a little bit we didn't get too far into taxes unless you want to touch on that real quick yeah sure like i think i i think i know what you're gonna say but tell me anyway <laughs> <laughs> so i you know i think it goes right back into the small government thing um as far as taxes are concerned if our taxes were transparent and they were actually going to infrastructure fire police um the road systems and you know what i really don't even want to see them go to schools because here's my here's my position on the school teachers personally speaking we go back into you know i believe that people have a calling for certain things so if you're if you're a school teacher because nobody really goes to be a school teacher to make all different kinds of money okay right. <laughs> you have a calling to be a school teacher so you know to get federal funding we need to cut that we need to make as many small individualized schools as humanly possible where we go back to the fundamentals reading writing arithmetic realistically speaking make them all read make them all write make them all learn some math get them to the point where you know their parents can teach them how to budget how to work in their lifestyles because 
that's the way that they're going to be. Um, and, and spend your taxes on things that actually matter. And the more money we save, actually just focusing on what the Constitution says to spend our tax dollars on yeah. will give us then the extra money, like we said before, to help other people in the community and actually build a stronger community, in my humble opinion, because you'll be you'll be so contained. It will be like your own little paradise or your own little world. And if you don't like it, you'll have the money to get up and go to a different community. So you won't be, be feeling like you're stuck or anything like that. So, you know, that's another thing that, you know, the libertarians are all about, you know, let's end the federal income tax. Well, okay, that's a great idea, except for you're still paying these people in the military and you still have to pay Congress every once in a while. So if we can eliminate everything except for paying our legislators, and you want to roll back the legislative time, like only, let's do it like healthcare enrollment. Only in the fall you can write bills. Mm. So in the fall, and every person only gets to write one bill. And then, you know, maybe two bills, we'll do a Democratic and a Republican bill each year. And only two bills can go in each year. And like I said, shrink all that bureaucracy into a very neat micromanaged by the people process in any other case and form i hate micromanagement but i think we should micromanage our government <laughs> yeah i think so too i think the i think the uh, founding fathers thought so also because it's like well if you don't like them i mean you have the uh power and permission to replace them and make a new government if you want to so <laughs> i was like <laughs> Oh, that never gets read either. I wonder why. Actually, I don't wonder, but... Um, <laughs> now, I'm the same way with... Um, I wish schooling was just more basic, like you said. Reading, writing, arithmetic. And then you could go out and... I think parents totally need to take a, take the time to teach their kids. And a lot of time, my pushback on that for, from people is, well, parents won't do that. Like, well, okay, but now... <laughs> yeah, I mean, if they don't do it. Let's do that. See, now the argument there is that parents don't have the time to do that. So, again, if we're rolling back all these regulations, they're keeping more money in their pocket, they're spending uh, more wisely, then they don't need to work as hard. Then they won't need to be out of the household as much. You won't need that much money, and then you'll have time. So, what then will be your excuse? Because we're going to take all those excuses and crumble them up and throw them into the trash. So if you're not willing to teach your kids, why are you having kids? Kind of confused. Yeah. Or like, uh, I always come back with, well, it doesn't matter. Like my parents didn't teach me about money management, but there's, uh, like books and there's other people out there who make it like, so there's, there's a guy named Dave Ramsey. That's his business. His whole business is to teach you how to manage your money a certain way. Right. And then there's other people out there, uh, the, his opposite, I think, is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And he talks oh, about yeah. how to use debt to your advantage. <laughs> yeah. Familiar? <laughs> yeah. And so, like, there's, I don't know, it, it, it didn't really ever seem to matter beforehand when people lost their parents and, and they didn't have anybody to teach them. They figured it out. Like, they watched other people do it or whatever. So that's always been my come back to that is that it doesn't parents should do it because they're your first teacher they're the ones that you you know you're based off of your parents so you're going to learn similarly they're going to be able to teach you the best but um even if they don't even if they're a bad parent or die or something there's all this information out there still you can teach yourself in this day and age especially in this day and age we have access to the most information now uh, that's aside from tech censorship and that's a whole nother video as well yeah but we, we have access to so much information there's really no excuse anymore for anybody to not have the answers that they're looking for because they're even making up answers now even if you don't like the first answer that you get you can go find somebody that agrees with you <laughs> yeah exactly so for me it's like it doesn't really matter we don't really need to teach these things in school <laughs> We need to, to simplify it back. Um, I was talking to somebody and I was like, you know, I really kind of just wish we could do it again where the community came together who had children. They hired some teachers 
and those people taught all the kids like yeah. <laughs> like that and, and, and yeah how much the education was back then um and and what they focused on you know you and you got a real civics lesson you got a real math lesson come on now we're sending these kids into high school for trigonometry and algebra and you know all these sciences and stuff and i'm like you know outside of high school I never used it yeah i never used it yeah. so why can't you just reinforce the things that you taught them in oh i don't know say k through third grade because i think around third grade is when i really it started sticking there were things that i can remember back in, you know that sort of stuff so i get starting them early because you get all your motor skills you get all your you know memorization processes and all that stuff so what about like a reverse um elementary school when you get into high school so ninth 10th and 11th grade you um you know go back and learn the stuff that you learned in first second and third grade and mm -hmm. just kind of i did want to yeah, I did want to say thank you very much for dealing with my questions. Maybe you've heard, maybe you've had people ask you them like a million times, but um, I appreciate your uh, you willing your willingness to do this, basically. <laughs> so, like I said, we'll have to get you on to my channel, but I've got to figure out a way to actually record the video and audio together. So, okay. <laughs> See you later. Bye.